get set up here. And then we're gonna go ahead and start bringing it out. Shared the lesson, but he's still messing with it. It's all good. Huh. These devils are, are hurt. <laughs> Brother, you got my spirit going when you brought up that damn devil. <laughs> yeah, man, that was ridiculous. <laughs> you better not be here when I get yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, see. <laughs> see, she thought she was running, uh, you know, across the average simp walking around here. All right, without further ado, we're going to get ready to bring into it. Once again, standing out on the front lines for your how about shin, your how shot. Before we get started, we're going to face the east. I'd like to give all praises to your how Ah uh, Shem, Yahweh Shai, Ah uh, Shem, Kadash, double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. I'm standing on the front lines as soldiers on the battlefield. This is a spiritual battle that we're engaged in. And soldiers don't get much time off. We don't have time off. So every day we're bringing this fire, this heat. Why you think we're seeing a huge swarm of activities around the world today, specifically geared towards attacking this message. And we got the message of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. So this, the wicked are being consumed with the fiery words of this gospel. And this is why we're seeing YouTube guidelines, community strikes, community restrictions, shadow banning, and seeing videos get removed just about as fast as we can put them up. And usually when that video gets shared a few times, it's being taken down. So we know that the message that we have is the truth, the right message, because it's having an effect. Let's go ahead and start off in uh, the Refuge of Lies. I think that's Isaiah 28. <coughs> Sweeping the Refuge of Lies. I'm trying to get connected to here. Spirit going to take over and go where it goes. Hey, today we got the um, beloved brother, GMS Amak Ice from Yahweh with us today as well. Chapter 28, verse 1. One moment, over the shot. Hey, King, you got anything? Yeah, just whatever you get spirit on you, bro. Come on. Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 1. And it reads, Woe to the crown of proud, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Now, when the Bible is going into drunkenness and wine, it's really talking about a mindset. This is a state of mind. A lot of you jakes are drunk off the wine of Babylon, and you're being settled in your, on your leaves. You're comfortable here. So you're spun up on this so-called American dream. So don't get it twisted. You're drunk off the wine of Babylon, even to this day. But because Shah, again, about that, those drunkards. Once more, woe to the crown of proud, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower. Whose glorious beauty is a fading flower. So listen, this is played out. The garments of the world. The mindset of Babylon. Let's go. Which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Overcome with wine. See? So this is why this gospel has to come out. We got to be born again. 
we got to wash the old mindset of committing Islam, Buddha, Hinduism, woman over the man, feminism, women's liberation. Read that again, Mubakasha. Once more, woe to the crown of the proud, to the drunkards of thief, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Verse 2, and it reads, Behold, the Lord, Yahweh Baba Shem Yahweh have a mighty and strong one, which has a tempest of hell and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, so cast down to the earth with the hand. And this is what's coming, a destroying wind. Why you think the prophets are out here in full force, hitting the front line? That tempest is going to come, a fiery hailstorm. So this is the judgment coming. Uh, if you don't mind, Revelations chapter seven, hurt not the earth. Now you hold what you got. Get the other king. Yeah, you see. So that tempest is going to judge Babylon, and started with the two third Israelites. The Most High is going to use Esau, Edom, the devil to start stirring up UN troops, Gurkha troops. Why you think the Chinese got a military police station in New York and they got three locations in Toronto. So the judgments are going to start with the house of Israel, the rebels. Let's read that again about that tempest and then we're going to go to, um, to the king over here and read Revelation 7. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 2 once more, and it reads, Behold, the Lord Yahweh Babasim Yahweh shall have a mighty and strong, which as a tempest of hell and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, so cast down to the earth with the hand. Beautiful. We're going to get here and go to Revelation 7. So the elect are being sealed while the Most High is cooking up a recipe for destruction, that's gonna be the judgment coming without mixture, pure fire. Come on, brother. Revelation chapter seven, uh, from top. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter seven, verse one. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth. That the what? That the wind should not blow on the earth, Uh huh. nor the sea, nor, uh, nor on any trees. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. So it's all about the elect. The angels are holding back the destruction. Whenever there's a massive so-called natural disaster, these are angels that are holding back the destruction while the elect is being sealed on the earth. The trees of righteousness are being planted in these last days. The word of the living God is being planted into the minds of the elect. Let's get some more on that. Oh, beautiful. Verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed 144,000. That does not mean only 144,000 are being saved. This is the governing body. These are the cabinet members. These are the kings, the magistrate, the judicial order that's being set up under the tabernacle of David. Come on. Of all the tribes of the children of Israel, beautiful. Of the tribe of Judah, were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben, were sealed twelve thousand. That's good, brother. Okay. See, so that's the tabernacle of David. See, so we got representatives from every tribe from the house of David is setting up a governing body. Yahweh Shai is sitting on that throne. Let's go back to Isaiah twenty-eight, Baba Kasha. Isaiah chapter twenty-eight. Verse 3, and it reads, the crown of proud, 
the drunkards of Ephraim should be trodden under feet. Verse 4, and it reads, And the glorious beauty which is on the head of the fat valley should be a fading flower. And as the hasty fruit before the summer, which when he that looketh upon it seeth, while it is yet in his hand, he eateth it up. Verse 5, and it reads, and that day should the Lord Yahweh, Baba Shem Yahweh of hosts, be for a crown of glory and for a diadem of beauty. And for a diadem of beauty. So the Lord gets the glory through the elect. The elect are singing forth the praises of this gospel. The elect are exalting his holy name. So the Most High has always preserved a remnant that are going to be preserved from the said perils that are going to come upon the earth. Come on. Once more, chapter 5, Salah, chapter 28, Isaiah, verse 5, and it reads, And that day should the Lord, Yahweh Baba Shem Yahweh of hosts, be for a crown of glory and for a diet and a beauty unto the residue of his people. See, the residue, that's the remnant. Only the brothers of Great Millstone and like-minded brothers are teaching this. The residue, that's the remnant, elect. Come on. Verse 6, and it reads, and for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment, and for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. Verse 7, and it reads, but they also have erred through the wine and through strong drink are out of the way. The priests and the prophets have entered through strong drink. How many of these camps are still promoting false doctrine? There is no sea hit. There is no Jacob's trouble. See? So even the priests have error. Those same wicked Jakes are back in their lot. They're, they're back. So this is why the true leaders have to be nonstop, have to keep the fire burnt and not let it smolder because the wine of Babylon, which includes the rebels, the two thirds of the house of Saul, they're teaching a false doctrine. There ain't no Jacob's trouble. There ain't no sea hip. There is no mark. We don't got to worry about this man's juice and toxins when this man is killing us every day. So the fire got to stay lit. The flame got to keep burning. The torch is, is this wisdom. Come on. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. They err in vision. So they don't see the prophecies. They can't see the events that lie ahead. They have no vision. And when there is no vision, the people perish. Let's read that again. Isaiah chapter 28, <coughs> once more, verse 7. And it reads, But they also have erred through wine, through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. They err in vision and stumble in judgment. Yeah, Kanye West made some recent statements about who we are, but that's just the icing on the cake. We've been teaching every day about the prophecies that are unfolding. The two thirds of the house of Israel that are gonna be slaughtered here in America. We've been talking about the wicked being identified. That man of sin, the son of perdition that put himself up as us, that took over and called himself the Israelites or the chosen people. We are the Jews. We are the Israelites. We are the anointed and the chosen ones that was cut off from our heritage. So this man is barely putting icing on the cake. We've been sounding the alarm and blowing the trumpet for years. Come on. Verse 8, and it reads, For all tables 
are full of vomit and filthiness so that there is no place clean. What are these tables? The tables are the doctrines of this world, particularly Babylon. So the Lord is preparing a way and a table in the wilderness for his elect, where we're eating, we're being sustained and nourished. So our minds were filthy off the doctrine of Babylon. So now we're eating from the fruitful table of life. This doctrine, let's go. Verse nine, and it reads, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Yeah. Verse 10, and it reads, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So vocab Malone calls us up, accuses us of Hebrew hot scotch and saying we're cherry picking. Well, you can't read vocab Malone. We just read it. Precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. So the spirit is like the wind. It shifts, redirects, and change directions. Who can measure or calculate the trajectory of the wind when it's changing like the spirit? That's the way this knowledge operates. We don't know who the most high is going to make the up and coming elect who he's going to anoint. We don't know who's going to wake up out of this deep sleep, but the most high is guiding the ship, directing the train. He is orchestrating events. So even Kanye West is being used. Many are chosen, many are called, but few are chosen. So Kanye is just being used to muster up the masses of Israelites, but that doesn't mean they're the elect. So the most high is orchestrating this great symphony. Come on. Isaiah <laughs> chapter 28, verse 11, and it reads, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. When you go into that word, stammering lips, we're mocking the system. So we're ridiculing and making fun of this pedophile kingdom. That's what we're doing. We have no fear of this man. We don't fear what they can do to this body, but we fear the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Come on. Verse 12, and it reads, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the worry to rest. And this is the refresh. Yet they would not hear. Verse 13, and it reads, But the word of the Lord Yahweh was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall back and be broken and snared and taken. So Jake, we're telling you, this is our rest. We're not gonna get comfort here. Even if you try to purchase a property, you don't own that property. You gotta pay taxes till you die. And if you pass away, your property goes into probate status. The government takes over. And even then, if it's passed down to family members, it's owned by the government. We're listed as tenants even on property that we have the deed to in our name. So we're not gonna get rest in the kingdom that was built with us being slaves. It's contingent upon us being servants. The very infrastructure, the system modeled after ancient Rome, it's standing on the pillars of the labor of the Israelites that built ancient Egypt, that built America, so you rising up, it's not designed for Israelites to be raised up on the top, to be leaders of this so-called free world. Come on. Verse 4. Wait a minute. You got a precept? Uh, this is uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 12, verse 9. 
Uh, therefore, we also, albeit, we need none of these things. Like the brother just said, this place is not built for us. But you know, our rest is in, in these scriptures right here. So we're going to prove it to this uh, precept. Uh, 1 Maccabees 12, verse 9 again. Therefore, we also, albeit, we need none of these things, but that we have the holy books of scripture in our hands to comfort us. Beautiful. Man, that's fire. And see, we're trying to bring out this doctrine daily. This is our rest, this doctrine. This is how we get peace of mind. How many of, how many of you have ever been out there homeless? I have. I was homeless when I was about 19 years old. I didn't know about the truth. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know that I was under the curses of Deuteronomy 28. And if I'd have found out back then, man, but the Most High was building me up even back then. All right? The best leaders know what it feels like to be, to be at the bottom, to be kicked around, to be looked down upon, to be spat on. I've been spat on, homeless. Little did I know, the, most, the Bible says, when thou art brought to a low estate, take that cheerfully. So the Most High is building up leaders, governors, rulers, kings, priests. So we were beat down so that we can appreciate being exalted, raised up in that place where we were sold as slaves, we're being resurrected from the graves and being told we are the sons of the living God. We're not Gentiles. We are the Israelites, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we're rising up in these last days. Come on, let's go. Precept. Back up what you just said. Uh, this is uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 22. 22. Therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, thou scourgest our enemies a thousand times more to the intent. Woo. When we, it's like it, when we judge, we should carefully think of thy goodness and when we and we and when we ourselves are judged we should look for mercy that's beautiful what is that a perfect balance what kind of judge do you want to set up in office that don't understand balance so the scales of justice are weighed and measured in the balance so we're many judges many lords so we're learning the way of the power of the universe Let's go back to that Isaiah 28, brother. You about to go into those scourges. This is beautiful. Isaiah <coughs> chapter 28, verse 14. And it reads, Wherefore hear the word of the Lord your house, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Verse 15, and it reads, Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death and with hell. Are we at agreement? When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge. We have what? Made lies our refuge. Most of you, Jakes, you choose death rather than life. You're choosing the ways of this world. You think you're going to be elevated into the Rothschild status in the kingdom that's not yours. Last I checked, Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So how are you going to find rest serving in your enemy's land? It doesn't work. Come on. <laughs> and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Verse 16, and it reads, Therefore, thus said the Lord, Yahweh, our power, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. So you Old Testament only heads. Who is this cornerstone? The chief cornerstone. Our foundation. It's Yahweh Shai. A word that was made flesh and walked and dwelled amongst us. So if you reject Yahweh Shai, then you are walking dead. So the word resurrects us to life. 
the word which strengthens us, revivings our spirit. How you think we're able to stand out here, fearless, bold as lions, condemning this wicked Edo queendom and rebuking the wicked sect of Israelites that reject this word and despise this counsel. Come on. Verse 17, and it reads, Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And the hell shall sweep away, and refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. So this bird is like waters, fountains of living waters, sweeping the refuge of lies. What does it mean to be anti-sim? Sim is a made-up word. We are shimmetic. Hell, the so-called Arabs are Shemitic. The so-called Chinese, Shemitic. So what are you talking about? We are Shemitic. We are descendants of Shem. That's why the Bible says, blessed be the God of Shem, which goes down through our facts there. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. So how can we be anti-Sim? The word is Shem. We are a Shemitic people. Abraham had eight sons, but the chosen line is through Isaac and Jacob, the 12 tribes. So this whole system is a refuge of lies, falsehood. Let's read that again, Bubba Kesha. Once more, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 17, and it reads, Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. Verse 18, and it reads, And your covenant with death shall be disannulled. And your what? Covenant with death shall be disannulled. So when you're joined unto this beast system, that is a covenant with death, married unto this system. The queen of heaven worship, married to worshiping that man of sin, forsaking the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we are gushing out waters that leads to life. Come on. And your agreement with hell should not stand when the overflowing scourge shall pass through. Then you shall be trodden down by it. So the word goes out first, followed by the judgment. There is no more covering for sins. There is no more excuse. The word has been going out on a high frequency every day, every night. That should tell you that something is in the air. What happens when you smell the aroma that's brewing up? There's a sense or a smell of change. Something is in the air. Why are the men of the Lord hitting the streets on five, five major continents, prophesying daily, weekly? What's happening here? This is a sign, a token. Come on, bro. You got a precept. Uh, come. Uh, this is Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after mm -hmm. that we have received the knowledge of the truth, Beautiful. there remaineth no more sacrifices for sins. Because uh, everybody knows, man. You cannot say that you don't know that you're an Israelite. We uh, bring everything out, you know, from the front to the back, the Old Testament, New Testament, everything we bring out, man. So everybody knows they're an Israelite, man. You see that? So you're being marked. We still use that term today. You know what? That dude, he's, he's been marked. See? So, but the elect are being sealed an exemption from judgment when we read Ezekiel chapter 8, the Thawah. And then you got those that are being condemned as this word goes out. There's no more excuse. The overflowing scourge is sweeping out the refuge of lives and those that are settled on their leads, set back and comfortable in captivity. Let me go here. John 15 and 22. The book of John, chapter 15, 
verse 21. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake. I'm going to go to verse 15. John 15, verse 15. Henceforth I call. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Being reconciled back, we go into that word reconciliation. So now we're reconciled back to the Father through the mediator. So this is a friendship. When you go into that word friend, it goes back to the Latin fratelli, which is fraternity, brotherhood. So this is a brotherhood of the saints, elect. John 15 and 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whosoever, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. See? So the name carries a vibration. The name carries the doctrine. We can't separate the name from this gospel, the gospel of the good news. Let me read that again. John 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. This is why we were given false names. We were given Greek injects, like Jebus, like Christos, like Christ. So they took out a holy name. The Father's name is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai. Why would the slave master give us the true names? So they took out the names and put in Greco-Roman injects. That name Jesus comes from Gian Trasino in 1524. And it was later popularized around 1624. So the name carries a spiritual power. John 15 and 17. These things I command you, that ye love one another. And how do we love one another? By teaching this gospel. Let's go to the top of John 15. John chapter 15, verse 1. And it reads, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Verse 2, and it reads, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bear fruit, he purgeth it. See, this, one moment, this is why brothers fall out. They're not grounded in Yahweh Shah. And I'm not going to call any names, but they downplay Yahweh Shah. They don't believe in the Messiah. Look up dagger men. All right, you already know what group that is. Like the dagger men. They downplay or minimize or marginalize Yahweh Shai. That's why they got the false doctrine. And many of them fall out because they're not connected to the life source. Let's read that again, Bubba Kasha. Once more. Chapter 15, verse 2. And it reads Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he take it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purge of it that it may bring forth more fruit. So the elect are being purged, pruned, fine-tuned to get better in this faith, stronger. Come on. Verse 3, and it reads, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Verse 4, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, 
except it abide in the vine. So yep. there's a difference between the elect. You got family members noticing something's different or changed in you. You're not the same man. You're not the same woman. The old house has been cleaned out, remodeled, renovated. There's a new man and it, your family can see it. Your affiliates can see it. Your associates, they notice a change. It shouldn't take you having to tell somebody you've changed. They should know you by the fruit you give up. You don't have to go by and tell everybody, hey, look, I've changed. No, they're going to see your light. They're going to see the fruit of your doings. Let's read that again, Bubba Kasha. Once more, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Verse 5, and it reads, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Yeah. For, for without me, ye can do nothing. That's it. So this is, it takes a spiritual motor to keep going, to stay revved up. And you brothers know this in this truth, this is exhausting. So we got to have a spiritual interference ran. How do we keep our engines charged, our motors revved up? So we got to have Yahweh Shah. Hell, I've been sick for three and a half years. So I know that I'm not doing this on my own strength. You see that? So the brothers that are in Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, were being recharged daily. When we feel like we can't go any further, then that recharge kicks in. We got mobile chargers that are keeping our battery packs full of the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Let's go. Come on. Verse 6, and it reads, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. You die in place without the spirit of our Lord. Read that again, Bubba Shah. Once more, and it reads, <coughs> If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is with And men gather them, and cast them into the fight, and they are burned. Remember Revelation 7 that, that the Malak read earlier? See, hurt not the, the trees. See that? These trees that are dead are going to be cast into the fire. I know you saw that. They're withering away. They're good for nothing. They're not producing fruits which bring life. And a lot of you men out there sitting back on the sidelines, not pushing this gospel. You are lady boys. You're not a man. You're a GMO man. But the real men are standing up for truth's sake, righteousness sake. If not, you're a lady boy. You got one king? This is a Luke chapter 10, verse 16. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despise of him that sent me. That's beautiful. Yahweh Shah is important, man. You know, just like the, uh, the Malak said about, you know, the Dagger crew and, and other crews too, uh, well, you know, because they're not really camps, they're not really congregations, whatever you want to call them. They're just playing out, you know, niggas. They don't acknowledge or reverence Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, man. And Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is important, man. John, chapter 15. Verse 7, and it reads, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Verse 8, and it reads, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Verse 9, and it reads, as the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. 
continue in my love. What is that love? Is that smooching and cooching? No. The love is the teaching of the commandments of the Most High. It's not talking about a secular love. If you love me, keep the charge and the faith. Keep the commandments. So we're teaching and preaching the brotherhood, edifying the body. We're feeding the flock of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. It's not talking about a touchy feely love. Come on. <coughs> Verse 10. And it reads If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Verse 11. And it reads These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Verse 12, and it reads, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Verse 13, and it reads, greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Verse 14, and it reads, Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Verse 15 in the reads, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. Okay, see that? So we are joined unto the Father through Yahweh Shai. I know you saw that. So this is a reconciliation being brought back into a fraternal order. Let's go to John 21, please. What is that fraternal order? The order of Malak Kazadah. I know you see that. That's the brotherhood. So no longer are we just looking upon the old Levitical priesthood as the law givers. Now, all of the Israelites, men, the men, are going to be kings and priests under the order of Melchizedek, the king of righteousness, which is Yahweh Shah. I know you see it. So this is the brotherhood. Come on, let's go to John 21. John chapter 21, verse 1, and it reads, after these things, Yahweh Shah showed himself again to the disciples at the sea of Tiber Tiberius. Yeah, at the sea of Tiberius. Yep. And on this wise showed he himself. Verse 2, and it reads. One moment. Oh, look at Shah. See, we gotta take our time, brothers. Yahweh show himself. So these same apostles, there's something resonant in the deep layers of their spirit to follow the Messiah. The, the apostles are back. I know you saw that. He showed himself unto them. So in their spirit, they're being pied piped to follow the master. Why you think he said, my sheep hear my voice? So reincarnation is all throughout the Bible. Let's go back, back to that again, Mordecai. Once more, after these things, Yahweh Shah showed himself again to the disciples mm -hmm. at the Sea of Tiberias, mm -hmm. and on this wise showed he himself. Mm -hmm. Verse two, and it reads: They were together, Simon, Peter, and Thomas, called. Didymus and Nathaniel and Canaan and Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. <laughs> Verse 3 Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fish. They said unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. Verse 4, and it reads, 
But when the morning was now come, Yahweh stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Yahweh Verse 5, and it reads, Then Yahweh said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. Verse 6, and it reads, And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. Brother, you know where that scripture at? Meat for repentance. See, do y'all have any meat? Hey, listen, man, this is heavy. You know what? The, the apostles, they've been in this ministry for over 30 years. Now, and they can tell you better than I can. So if I go off, please correct me. But when they first started out, there was not many fish being gathered. They were just getting, you know, a, a couple of or so here and there. Onesies and twosies or two and three at a time. Now the net is being cast into the sea of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Cast that net on the right side. So there is a remnant elect that are gonna occupy the right side of Yahweh Shai. I mean, this is too much, it's too much. So now the apostles are seeing the fruits of their labor in mass meet for repentance, elect, not wicked ass Negroes with dry lips and ashy elbows. We don't let the train go by. We got to get that meat. Hey, this Bible just does something to me, man. I get overheated. Let's get that meat for repentance, then we're going to come back to you, King. Come This is uh, St. Matthew chapter 3. I'm going to start off at verse 5, but the point is at verse 8. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea, and all the rain ran about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees uh, come to his uh, baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits, meet for repentance. Ooh. Verse 9, and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, the Most High is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. You see that? So this is a select predestination those that are ordained pre-selected before the foundation of the world the game is rigged the most high already knows who he wants who's going to be delivered so the meat for repentance he has a specific type make category the king knows what he wants and he's very particular his elect this is the first church, if you're in the spirit. Those spirits that were created right after Yahweh Shai. That's the first church that's being rebuilt on earth. I mean, this is heavy. Let's go back to that. So that those that are meet for repentance are his elect. The church of the Zion. Zion. John, chapter 21. Once more, verse 6, and it reads, And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Verse 7, and it reads, Therefore that disciple whom Yahweh shall love said unto Peter, it is the Lord Yahweh Baba Shem Yahweh Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord Yahweh Baba Shem Yahweh he girt his fisher's coat unto him and then cast himself into the sea. Verse 8, and it reads, And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were 200 cubits 
dragging a net with fishes. Verse 9, and it reads, as soon they as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there. You see, you see that? So we're seeing a lot of uh, symbolism in here. So the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a net. Let me go here to Matthew 13. The book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. The elect are the crown jewels of Israel. Matthew 13 and 46, who, when he had found one pearl of a great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. The sacrifice is made for Israel, which starts with the elect. For we are purchased with the blood of the lamb. We're purchased with a price. Matthew 13 and 48. Let's go to 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. We're getting the unclean. We're getting the sea fish, I mean the uh, shellfish, crab, shrimp, lobster. Those are the unfaithful Israelites. They're being caught up in the net to be destroyed. For so the word is a stumbling block unto the unfaithful, the mockers, the scoffers, the unbelieving. See that? Let's keep going. I'm going to read it again. Matthew 13, verse 48. Let's go back to 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So the two thirds are only being snared by this word. You're being set up or marked for judgment, but the elect are being caught up into the ark, coming into the house of the Lord for safety. And they're gonna be taken up into the so-called UFOs. These are the chariots of the Lord, his secret chambers. So this leads to salvation, but damnation to the undesirables, the unclean vessels. Matthew 13 and 49, so shall it be at the end of the world, the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. Those are the chariots. See that? Come on. <laughs> Once more, verse nine, and, and it reads, as soon as they, then, as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Verse 10, and it reads, Yahweh shall say unto them, bring up the fish which ye have now caught. Verse 11, and it reads, Some Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, and hundred, and fifty, and three, and four. All oh, there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Now watch this. These apostles were being shown their future lot. Yeah, they caught fish, but this thing runs spiritual too. The apostles cast in the net this doctrine, and it began to come back with more and more of the elect. See that? So they're being shown their lot. They're being shown their future preponderance of the level of responsibility that are gonna be placed on their shoulders. Peter, back. John, back. James, see? <clears throat> so these mighty holy men are shown their responsibility through due diligence of teaching the gospel. So we gotta stay with this thing in the spirit. Come on, read that again. I'll, 
about the multitude of fish once more. Verse 11, and it reads, Simon, Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fish and hundreds and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Verse 12, and it reads, Yahweh shall said unto them, come and die. And none of the disciples dare ask him, who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. See? So the elect are meat for repentance. So we're going to eat and dine in the kingdom of heaven with the Messiah when he arrives the second time. See? So the elect are going to sit at the king's table enter into the king's court so this thing is heavy those fish are being gathered for the harvest the end of the world and we're going to meet our husband men we got a preset in the lot okay, uh, this is uh, the book of acts chapter 15. Uh, i'm gonna start off at verse 14. simon have declared how the most high at the first did visit the gentiles to take out of them a people for his name and that people was Israel, but I'm gonna read on. I just wanna explain it. Verse 15, and to this agree the words of the prophecy as it is written, after this will I return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down and will build again the ruins thereof and will set it up that the residue of men might seek after Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, who doeth all these things. And that's the Lord calling us, man, because before we came back into our heritage, we was Gentiles. We was in a, a, a docile mind state. We was dead. We was in utter darkness, but now we have been awoken. We have been activated uh, through, through the words of Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, hearing this gospel, this good news. Okay, Isaiah 61, you know, Ezekiel 37. That's beautiful. Uh, and see those Gentiles, the Christian church will read that and say, whoopee, that's the Chinese, that's the Arabs. No, those are Israelites scattered into these regions that are taking on Gentile ways and customs. So these are Israelites being gathered back into the fold. We got another preset the king is going to bring up. Yeah, this to prove you, we ain't, we ain't talking out of our butts, man. We speaking facts. Uh, this is uh, 2 Maccabees chapter 2, mm -hmm. verses 17 to 18. We hope also that Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, that delivered all his people and gave them all in heritage and the kingdom and the priesthood and the sanctuary, as he promised in the law, will shortly have mercy upon us and gather us together out of every land Woo! okay and gather us together out of every land under heaven into the holy place for he have delivered us out of out of out of great troubles and that purified the place pure fire is getting warm out here that's right let me read this to back the brother up second maccabees one verse one the brethren the what the brethren the Jews that be at Jerusalem and in the land of Judea wish unto the brethren, the Jews that are throughout Egypt, health and peace. God be gracious unto you and remember his covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, his faithful servants. See, so this is about the covenant. The Most High says, I am the Lord. I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So we almost out of here. The Most High is remembering his mercy and his promises that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We got next, and we're getting close. That's why these devils are taking down the videos, 
settled in. We're close to the kingdom. Beautiful precept. What you got, huh? Back to John 21. John chapter 21, verse 14. And it reads, this is now the third time that Yahweh shall show himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. Ooh. Verse 15. Let me talk on that for a moment. This is why the apostles and the elect are unmovable. The third time after he rose from the dead. So this thing is spiritual. The message has been engraved in our soul, in our mind. It cannot be changed. It's a writable, a, a non-writable program. Who's a computer guy? Well, you got a disc that's not rewritable. I mean, I've ever seen that. There's a CD where it's already programmed or it's already been written, instructions. So it's a non-rewritable disc or program. That's the elect, unmovable, unshakable. The Lord has written instructions upon the minds of the elect. Precept. Got a precept? God. This is uh, St. John chapter 10. Uh, <coughs> starting off at verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. That's beautiful. And it's a perfect alignment with the precept on the common board. I'm going to go here. Shalom, beloved king, basic wisdom. Rakata. This is 2 Peter 1, verse 12. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. How do you remember something? That means it was in your memory or mind one time before. We just read reincarnation again. How can I remind you of something I never told you in the first place? The Christian church is finished. The doctrine of the apostles, elders, prophets, and teachers is being established and grounded and rooted in the minds of the elect. We got the victory through the word. Let's go. Verse 15, and it reads, So when they had done, Yehoshua said to Simon, Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, Lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yeah, Lord Yahweh, Bob me, I was shot thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. And this is why you know the elect by their fruit. The elect can't be quiet, the elect can't stop teaching, the elect can't stop preaching, can't stop interpreting. It's Sirach 39, please, somebody. The elect can't stop edifying, which means building. The elect are builders to the kingdom to come. So you know the elect by the fruit, the characteristics. If it walks like a lion, smells like a lion, roar like a lion, cry aloud like a lion, then more than likely, it's a lion. So we know the trees of righteousness by the fruit of Yahweh Shai that's been imparted upon the remnant elect. I'm not talking about pussycats out there that are scared. We're not talking about you. Come on, King. Sirach. Well, Sirach chapter 39, verse 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law Woo! of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof, mm. will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. Malak, Bubba Kishad, read that again. Ah, 
Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach 39, verse 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep on going There's on? a little more meat on the bone, don't you? Woo. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men. He will do what? He will keep the sayings of the renowned men. So this thing is put back in our remembrance. That's right. We're just regurgitating what we wrote and said in the days of old. Come on. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men and worst up till parata, uh, parable Salakia, mm -hmm. or he will be there also. Mm -hmm. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and become conversant in dark parables. Who's interpreting the scriptures? What we call breakdowns. Who's doing that? What better men to do that than the men that wrote it? The authors of the books. Come on. He Can shall you read that again, Bubba Kisha, about those subtle and Come. grave sentences? Uh, verse 3, uh, Sirach 39, verse 3. He will seek out secret great uh, grave sentences mm -hmm. and be conversant in dark parables. Mm. He shall serve among great men and appear before princes. He will travel through strange countries, for he hath tried the good and the evil among men. See? So the traveling working men are the elect, don't have time to take time off. Don't have time to kick back and put our feet up. We're in war. We're on the battlefield. Well, you how about Shem? You how shy? Soldiers fighting for righteousness' sake, truth's sake. We're in the world of gross darkness, pedophiles, pimps, molesters, extortionists, gangbangers, corrupt politicians. So, for truth's sake. We're standing boldly in the face of those that have afflicted us. The king got another precept. It's very important. With the, the back of what the brother's talking about, we ain't never going to, uh, you know, be silent. Uh -huh. I'm just going to read it. Uh, this is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, mm. beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation, and we're going to get that word, vocation, where with you are called. This is very important. This is very, very important. What does what vocation mean? But the brother's making an excellent point. The men are not going to be quiet. They're going to be taking no breaks, no days off, none of that, man. So let me get this word, uh, this definition real quick, brother, for sure. Vocation in the uh, etymology online. Vocation. Spiritual calling. Mm, 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 mm. Do you hear that? Spiritual calling. <laughs> wow. That's it, your profession, and we're spiritually called, and we want to be chosen. You got him a lot. Well, did not the, the Bible say the Most High told Daniel he was going to stand in his lot and do his job, basically, in the last days? Matter of fact, Bubba Kasha, see that? So this brother just opened up another flame out here upon the campfire. That's too much. <laughs> Come on, King. <laughs> <laughs> it was the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 9. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Uh, it's like, uh, you know what? It's like it's verse 13. Oh, good. It's like uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 13. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the day. Daniel is back brothers he just read it see so the most high said daniel you're going to do your job in the end days the latter days stand in your lot so how can you say reincarnation is not scriptural we just read it uh, if you don't mind book the shop let's see the comment for it real quick to come, the 
the praises of the Lord your house and his strength and his wonderful works that he have done. So the children of light cannot be hidden. The children of light are given forth wisdom, all right, exuberance, are shining bright in these last days. I mean, this is too much. You can't hide a light in a land of gross darkness, a land of pure, just blankets of thickness and wickedness, darkness, a shadow of death. You can just cut through the wicked air here. So you can't hide the children of light. This is the generation that seek after the most high. That's Psalms 24 and 6, I believe. Let's read that again, Mother Kasha. Pillars of Benjamin. <coughs> Psalms chapter 78, verse 4. And it reads, We will not hide them from their children. Show unto the generation to come the praises of the Lord your out and his strength and his wonderful works that he have done. What is us standing out here and boldly in the face of those that have afflicted us? Wonderful works, multiple fish being caught up into the net. That's true. Wonderful works. Prophesying on five major continents. Wonderful works. We are a sign, a wonder, and a spectacle upon the world. Let's read that next one that he had. So Dark Amron, House of David, 144. Baruch, chapter two, verse 30. And it reads, for I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. Is this talking about the little hats with big noses? Hell no, all right? They always claim to be us. Let's read that again, Bubba Kasha. Once more, Baruch chapter two, verse 30. And it reads, who I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. But in the land of their captivity, they should remember themselves. Beautiful, see that? Well, how are we showing that we've been called into remembrance? Because we understand the mercy that he has bestowed upon us. To wake up to our heritage. We understand that we are the children of promise. We understand that we are the bloodline, the gene, narration of nobility. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the kings that were subdued and taken down by Rome in 70 AD, down the light of mercy and wisdom is shining upon the elect that are being called out. That's the church, Ecclesias, called out. So now we are bringing forth the praise and its glory. We are the vessels of mercy, the church. I'm gonna to go to the comment board. <coughs> Let me go here. The book of Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. Revelations 10, verse 10. And I took a little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. So this truth is a bitter sweet. It goes in sweet but it settles on the tummy or on the belly bitter. When we learn about the trial and tribulation, Jacob's trouble, when we learn about two thirds of the Israelites being slaughtered, that's the bitter. But the sweet is eternal life, eternal glory, ruling in the eternal kingdom of excellency to come. So we got everlasting promises to outweigh the bitter. The sweet and the goodness of his grace and mercy are eternal. Let me read that again. Revelations 10, verse 10. <coughs> and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. 
and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. I thought John died on the island of Patmos at around 95 years old. So how is he going to prophesy again? Reincarnation. How did he eat the book up? He consumed it in his mind. Thou shalt prophesy again. What is that many peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues? He's here in America, the so-called melting pot. He's here. John 21, verse 16, and it reads, he said to him again the second time, son, son of Job, lovest thou me? He said to him, ye, Lord, Yahweh bless me, I was shot. Thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my sheep. This is what the true men of the Lord are doing. So you can't fake the truth. You can't fake the Holy Spirit. Every week, I rebuke niggas, block and delete. Block and delete niggas. Every week. Let's read that again, Bubba Kasha. You, you can't fake the Holy Spirit. Read that again, please. Once more, and it reads, he said it to him again a second time. Son, son of Job, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, Yahweh, Bible, Shem, Yahweh, Shach, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verse 17, and it reads, He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Job, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, Yahweh, Baba Shem, Yahweh, shout. Thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh, shout, said unto him, feed my sheep. Now, why is Peter getting the proverbial third degree? Because the church is being built upon Peter. His very name means Petra or rock. Peter, Petra, rock. So the church is being built because Peter was giving the commission of the charge of building the church in the last days. Now, why is this important? Because Peter understands the mission. Israelites are gonna look like the other nations. So this church is being multiplied. Go back and read Acts chapter two. Remember, every man comes back in the same lot. So when you read Acts 2, Arabians, Christians, Asians, I know you see that. So the church is being built astronomically. Why do you think great fear is falling upon the elite, the international bankers, the Rothschilds, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, the Gettys? Keep going, brother. Verse 18, and it reads, Beverly, Beverly, I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Verse 19, and it reads, This spake he signifying by what death he should glorify our power and he and when he has spoken this he said unto him follow me follow me so this is a spiritual programming we are set out into our lot we're on autopilot no false doctrine can derail us or throw us off track. No woman can derail us 
or throw us off track. The slave masters can't derail us or throw us off track. We are like heat-seeking missiles programmed to reach the destination, to reach the target. We're going to labor until the labor is done, until the work is complete. When you go into that word perfection, it means complete. So we're looking for a finished product. You don't tell a construction crew that the job is done and all they've done is put in framework rebar or poured concrete. The work must be completed. The contract must be fulfilled. The statement of work must be complete until it is finished. Please. All right, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 to back up the Malak. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. That's beautiful. So, like the brother said, man, you know, it's, it's our job, man. And we got to keep on working continuously and constantly, man. No days off, man. Okay, period, man. We got, as he just read, you know, feed my lambs, man. Okay, so we got to do what we're, what we're told to do. Got luck. Hebrews 6, book of Hebrews 6. <coughs> Can I read one more real quick? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That gives us time. This is uh, the book of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men mm. that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Amen. See, that's beautiful. You got to go break it down. See, that's beautiful because you got a lot of fakers out there. They claim to be us but they have no works. They have no fruits. So you don't love the flock of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, because you're not feeding his flock. Lambs must be fed daily. The sheep gotta eat and drink daily. And a lot of you Jakes out there, you're not missing any meals at all, but you won't feed the lambs of the Lord. And you out there running your mouth with no doctrine, the word is not in you. So we don't want to hear it. Hey, listen, contrary to popular belief, we're against niggas too. I want to throw that out there. A lot of people see men of color and they think that we're with niggas. We're not. All right? I want to get that out there right up front. If you're not in this truth, to hell with you. If you're not in this Bible, we don't give a damn about you unless you come to the word and be washed by the word made a new creature. I won't trust you around my family if you're not in this Bible. Let's go to Hebrews 6, please. Yup, we're gonna start from the top. Hebrews chapter six, verse one, and it reads, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Yahweh HaMashiach, let us go on Unto perfection. Unto what? Perfection. So that perfection means complete, finish. So we can't stop until the work is complete. The tabernacle of David. Let's go. Let's read that again, please. Once more. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Yahweh Shahab Mashiach, let us go unto perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God our power. Dead works. I know you saw that. Caveman's kingdom is confusion. Man. See? Over We're going to read that again. I'm lost my train of thought. Man, I'm trained. Hebrews. I mean, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 and it reads therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Yahweh Shaha Mashiach let us go on into perfection not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works 
and of faith toward God our power. So this kingdom is within us. It's not being built by being spectators or sitting on the sideline. I know you see that. See, faith without works is dead. So the kingdom comes to life through the lively stones. I know you see it. Let's keep going. Verse 2, and it reads, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on the hands. So we're being washed by the doctrine of truth. That's how we're being made clean. The old house is being cleaned out, the old man. Okay, the Negro got to be killed. And then we come to life through the spirit of the word. Come on. <coughs> Hebrew 6, somewhere around 2 and 3. Once more, of the doctrine of baptism and of the land on the hands and of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment and this will we do if god permit verse 4 for it is it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the holy ghost verse 5 and it reads holy spirit salak and the holy spirit See, so when you're following this doctrine, the, the lively stones are already in tune with the Father through the mediator. So the spirit of the Most High cannot die. So this is how we come to life in the land of gross darkness, the valley of the shadow of death. So if you're following this, take not your Holy Spirit from us because we die in the world, but we have eternal life when we're walking in the spirit of truth. Come on. Once more, and it reads, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit. Verse five, and it reads, and have tasted the good word of God our power. Have what? Tasted the good word of God our power. So we're eating from heaven. This is a heavenly manna. This is a bread of life. This is the wisdom from the fourth dimension, the third heaven. So we can no longer get satisfied of the GMO doctrines of the world. Okay, we have an insatiable appetite now for the true bread the true waters or fountains of living water once you get a taste for heavenly manna we can't go back to the world what is there to turn back to let's read that again please that last uh scripture you read sure yeah please thank you <coughs> Hebrews chapter 6 verse 5 yes and it reads and have tasted the good word mm. of God our power Woo. and the powers of the world to come mm. Goodness. verse 6 and it reads if they shall fall away to renew them again and to repent sin they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So the Messiah is not going to shed his blood again. So this is the time to get right. Now the kingdom is at hand. We're getting fed manna from heaven. We're drinking from the fountains of living water. So it's not time to turn back won't step back won't step down we're moving forward upwards towards glory the light so there's no turning back now the kingdom is at hand come on verse 7 and he reads 
for the earth which drinketh and the rain that cometh off upon it and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed, receive it, bless it from our power. So we have a table prepared for us in the presence of our enemies. They, they are baffled. They are bewildered with amazement. How can we eat and be at peace in the place of our slavery where we had our nutsack cut off and stuffed down our mouth? How can we be calm and how can we feel liberty in the place of our captivity? We're eating from the table of the Lord. See, so the kingdom is at hand. We're getting close. Come on. Verse 10, and it reads, For God our power is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Wait a minute, why is eating meat and the rains coming down being associated with labor? You see that? So this is a seasonal change we're entering into, ushering in the kingdom of Jacob. So we got to be nourished up. We're being fattened up off the herbs and the spices that have been sent down from on high. Come on. Once more, and it reads, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints, and do minister. Verse 11. So the message is to the elect, the saints. Everybody is not going to understand this. You ever try to give somebody uh, a meal that they tried for the first time, and they're looking at you sideways. So everybody's not meant to understand a heavenly wisdom. It just goes over a Negro's head when we start reading these scriptures. They're not able to follow. So they're getting an excitement from it, but they're not getting the full satisfactional pleasure. They're not getting comfort and relief. They're still trying to be preppers. They're still building their safe at home with weapons. Weapons are not gonna save you. Prepping is not gonna save you without the spirit and power from on high. We are hedgeless without the spiritual shield. Come on. Verse 11, <coughs> and it reads, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. There's a precept for that. Brother, just posted it. Make your calling and election sure. Let me get it. To Second Peter one. <coughs> Excuse me. The book of I'm going to go to Second Peter, chapter one, verse five. And let's go to four. Second Peter one, verse four. I'm going to let this train go by. I assume you knew where we were because of the train. I say, he probably knows where we at because of this train. Yep. All right, I'm going to read uh, 2 Peter 1, verse 4. Oh, I got to go to the top. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Hamashiach, Yehoshai, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Yahweh Mashiach. <coughs> Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of the Most High and of Yahweh our Lord. For the elect hath the wisdom. The elect have the understanding, the knowledge, so kings are being groomed and cultivated in the building of a kingdom and how to govern 
we had to first learn what? How to suffer, how to be afflicted. So we're learning the levels of a kingdom. Affliction, temperance, servitude, patience. See? <clears throat> Grace and mercy. Second Peter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Yahweh our Lord, according as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. So through virtue, virtue comes suffering. This is how we learn virtue, temperance. Whenever you see a building being built, the materials have to be like the glass, tempered glass. The mortar has to be tempered. You can't just throw shit together and expect it to build a stable foundation or building. So everything is built over the process of time and temperance. See, according as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So without being tempted with lust, women, money, greed, then we're not being tested. So we got to be tested through the temptation. This is how we're being hardened as a soldier on the battlefield. See, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge. The knowledge how to rule, how we know what it's like to be a peasant, homeless. We know what it's like to have nothing. So how much more greater the appreciation of substance, of nobility, kingship, the throne, governance, dominion. So this is a process of godhood, lordship, and to godliness. Whoa, we got to go here. Second Peter 1, verse 6. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. When I was homeless, if you would have told me to be patient, I probably would have knocked your ass up. <laughs> but you know what? Now that I'm an older man, I understand now. I had to go through that. And I think Brother um, um, Amafia Ice had to go through that too. You see? So you talk about being humble. That's the biggest test of humiliation. And the, the place that I lived at, it looked like an abandoned building with all the windows broken out. And I had a wicked nigga jump in and stole the only little black and white TV I had that my grandfather gave me. A wicked nigga broke in and stole the damn TV. I bet the Lord killed him. I bet you the Lord killed him. But anyway, so I learned virtue, temperance, patience, being brought to a lower state. Is that not written? Be cheerful when thou art brought to a lower state. It's hell being out here in these streets. Let's read this again. Second Peter 1, verse 6. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. We're being groomed, cultivated, nurtured, and developed to be lords. Is that not written? I have said, ye are God. Verse 7, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, 
they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach. So the fountains of wisdom are flowing out of the lively stones that are being matured, that are being nurtured to be kings. That's how we're able to teach daily. Second Peter 1, verse 9, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Diligence. And we're going to keep on pushing, keep on working, keep our hands on the plow until the kingdom is here. We can't stop, won't stop. Let's go. Let's go. Where you at, Al? Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. And it reads, That ye be not slept, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Read that again. What was Kasha? Man. Woo. He, chapter 6, verse 12, once more, and it reads, that ye be not slough, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. For our forefathers were diligent, not slothful, Shai came and sacrificed himself. So what more than for us to come out and teach, make our bodies a living sacrifice? Come on. Verse 13, and it reads, For when God our power made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no grave, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. Verse 15, and it reads, And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. After what? He had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. So we're working for the kingdom. You think we're out here just because we're bored or looking for a hobby? No. So this work, this edifying, which means building. So we are building the Lord's house. We're building the temple for the house of David. And that means slavery for our nation. When you understand the tabernacle of David, we're subject unto Israel. And that's coming again. Our huh? voice is shot. Let's go hit that Romans up. All right. This brother right here, Andre serving your harvest shot. Andre serving your harvest shot, 144. Romans chapter 5, verse 4. And it reads, impatient, experience, and experience, hope. Yeah. Same person, Andre Serving, Yahweh 144, Romans chapter 5, verse 5. And it reads, and hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God our power is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. And when you go into that word experience, it means tried out. So the lively stones are being purified through adversity and trials. We're being tested. We got to be made homeless. We got to know what it feels like to be hungry. We got to know what it feels like to suffer. So we're being tried out and being cultivated to lordship. We're going to understand 
what the servants are dealing with. We're going to understand what the peasants are struggling with. We know what it's like to try to make ends meet, rattling pennies together. So what better people to be set up as judges in the land other than the Israelites? Every kingdom we have served, the Assyrian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Greco-Roman Empire, the American Hero Dynasty, or the Beast, <coughs> NATO, the EU, America. So we have served in every major empire, the ancient Egyptian reign of terror. So kings are being birthed out of the surrogate mother, the daughter of Babylon, the mother of harlots. You gotta let us go, America. You gotta let us go, spiritual Sodom and Egypt. Come on. So Doc, Amram, House of David, 144, 2 Corinthians, yep. chapter 4, verse 7. And it reads, But we have this treasure, an earthen vessel, yep. that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. See that? So this is a spiritual force behind us. The power of the Holy Spirit. That's what drives us. This is not man-made. We can do nothing without being strengthened from on high. Let's read that again. I'm going to shut it down in two. Once more. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. And it reads, but we have this treasure yep. in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. See, so that treasure starts with this heavenly knowledge and wisdom. That's what builds the kingdom. That's what we got. All right, I'm going to scroll up. <coughs> close out here with uh, Sirach 2 and 1. Well, the Andre serving Yahweh shot. Andre serving Yahweh shot 144. Sirach chapter 2, verse 1. And it reads, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Beautiful. Sirach chapter 2, verse 2. And it reads, set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Now remember we read Sirach 39, meditate daily on prophetic scriptures. This is how we stay grounded and not distracted by the different snares of the world and the devices of Satan. Come on. Same person. Andre serving Yahweh shot 144. Sirach chapter 2, verse 3. And it reads, Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. I am the vine. Who said that? Yahweh shot. But we're cleaving unto the mediator. That's our bridge back to the Father. We are the branches. So remember, we die and wither away without the breath of life, without the fountains of living water. So the life source is in these scriptures. That's why they're attacking these videos. Let's read that again, Baba Kasha. Once more, Sirach chapter 2, verse 3, and it reads, Cleave unto him, and depart not away. Goodness. That thou mayest be increased at the last end. So the last end is the reward of the kingdom. We're going to return to our own estate and get those new bodies. Come on. Once more, Andre Servant, Yahweh Shah, 144, Sirach, chapter 2, verse 4. And it reads, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, mm -hmm. take cheer and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. 
be patient, brothers. You got brothers whose wives have left them. The wife took every damn thing. In this pedophile queendom, the woman can leave and take everything you got. And you got to bargain and get on the schedule to see your kids. The white man set this up where the woman gets all the power. You got to pay her three checks a month. You can't even see your kids. But you got to pay her while she get her back beat out by another man. That's the wickedness by the white man. So we're tired of this shit. And we're ready for the kingdom of heaven. If you think this is your rest, you done lost your damn mind. This is not our rest. White supremacy, women's liberation, feminism. It's, you got to fight to be a man here. And you get told that's toxic masculinity to be a man. If you love it here, you're of the devil. That's right. That's right. Read that again, Bubba Kasha. Surah, chapter 2, verse 4, once more. And it reads, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheer and be patient. Be what? patient out there, brothers. The kingdom is at hand. We're getting close. Chariot sightings are daily. The so-called UFOs, daily. I remember when you were lucky to see once a year, you were lucky to see a, a so-called UFO or chariot of the Lord. Come on. <clears throat> once more, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take chip and be patient. And there are chains to a lower state. Yep. Same brother, Andre Servant, Yahweh Shah 144. It's a rock, chapter 2, verse 5. And it reads, For gold is tried in the fight. For what? For gold is tried in the fight. Lively stones are building this kingdom. We men are men, if you haven't noticed. And uh, the, the, the king was bringing up an old video damn near two years ago where a so-called black woman will come up to me boldly talking about you a damn fool out here screaming at everybody. And I said, if you don't like the gospel, there's the door. Keep your ass walking. And she going to tell me, you better not be here when I get back. Who the hell are you? Who the hell are you? Well, you women going to learn we're not your average guys. Right. We're going to curse your ass out and tell you there's the door. There's the door. Come on. Once more, Sirach chapter 2, verse 5. And it reads, for gold is tried in the fight. So we're being tried and tested by the devices of Satan, women's liberation, feminism, simpism. A lot of you niggas you allow this type of nonsense and you don't check or correct. You're afraid to bring correction. So this is a, a showcase that the Most High put together to test us. We are the Job's being tried in the fiery trials of adversity. That's why we're catching hell. Come on. An acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. At what? furnace of adversity. Acceptable men in the fiery furnace of adversity. The lively stones are the building blocks of the Lord's house, which starts with the chief cornerstone. So Yahweh Shai spoke with authority. Matter of fact, I, if you don't mind reading that one, Yahweh Shai spoke with authority. I think it's Matthew 7, the last one. Yeah. St. Matthew chapter 7, uh, starting off with verse 28. Yes. And it came to pass when Yahweh Shai had ended these sayings, mm. the people were astonished at his doctrine. Mm. For he taught them as, as one having authority and not as the scribes. So when you come up to us, we're not going to be intimidated. I hope you heard that. We're not intimidated by this world. To hell with the devil. Feminism, white supremacy, women's liberation, false Christianity. To hell with you. 
Hopefully I made that clear. All right? We're not moved by the things of this world. We don't fear death. We fear you. How about Shin How shot? Hey, if you don't mind, King, one more, one more again, please. Come. On. This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 7, starting off at verse 28 again. And it came to pass, when Yahweh Shai had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Mm -hmm. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. One having authority. So we speak with the authority from on high. This is not man made. If you can't see the spiritual presence on the men that's out here teaching, then you just can't see. You see? So many are astonished at this doctrine. How can these men that have been brought up as slaves since birth stand up in the land of their captivity and speak like kings? It takes a spiritual power to be able to do that. That's a miracle. We're not stepping fetches like most of our men are. But we're bringing out this fire in the land of our captivity, in that place where it was said unto us, ye are not my people. There it's being said, we are the sons of the living God. Yasharala, Kwam Yasharala, Kwam Yasharala, and the Bible, the Bible. Let's go. First, face the east. All praises to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem, or Kaf Kadash. Double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect scattered abroad. We got next, Lord Willard. Rock a thumb. Shalom. Shalom. DTA. Abad Baba. Baba. Hey, King, it's been a pleasure having you with us here, man. You were just igniting more fire. It's the spirit, man. Poor Lord, Yah, Bashim, Yah, Shah, Bashim, Kakudash. Let's go. Love you too, brother. Let's go. Yup, soon. Tired of the games. That's right.